Let's take a look how we can render a VDB animation sequence inside of Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. Today I'm going to have a look at some a bit of a continuation of something we've discussed before, namely how to render a VDB animation inside Das Studio. Let me show you what it looks like. This is the rendered product inside of Premiere and this came all out of Das Studio. This is a building explosion project I've downloaded for free from the Django FX website. Those are the guys that make Embergen. And uh, we're going to explore how to make this happen inside Das Studio. You can also go and export your own whole animation VDB sequences from Embergen. It's the same principle that I've explored recently in a video in which I showed you how to do this for a single one. The principle is the same for an animation. And how to render that is what we're going to discuss right now. So this is what this looks like in Das Studio. I don't have a fully fledged playback here because iRay has to render it. So, you know, this is what, what happens, but you can see the principle. So with every frame that I move forward here, a new file from the VDB animation gets loaded into my surface channel there. And then, you know, it changes that. So if I go to the front, the explosion is smaller. And then the further I go to the back, the explosion gets larger. So let me show you how to set this up and also point out a few obstacles along the way. For reference, I'm going to go over here to jangafx.com and then I'll head over to the download section where I'm going to get a few free VDB assets here. As I said, you can export these yourself. You can create these yourself with their software Embergen. But for this demonstration, I'm going to go and download this one, the building implosion. That's the one I've downloaded and it's 116 frames, just something to make a mental note of. And there's a couple of things that we need to do that are not necessary if you export these from Embergen directly. But if you follow along with the download, then pay attention to what happens next. In Das Studio, I'm going to go and switch over from my IRA viewport to filament for now. I'm going to go and create a brand new scene just so that Das Studio is set up with a blank slate and then we'll get going. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, unzip or unpack our file. So in my downloads folder, I can see it here. This is the one that I've unzipped earlier. I might just go and delete that actually, just so that it's you know gone and doesn't interfere with whatever we're going to do next. This is the raw file that I've downloaded there. Raw files, they can only be extracted with special tools like 7-zip or WinRAW. I've got 7-zip here, so I'm going to go and extract the files here, extract here. That's what I'm going to do. And I'll say yes to everything, including the license file. Let that cook. And here's the extracted folder that I'm getting here. Perfect. I don't really know why Windows puts it at the very bottom here under a long time ago, but hey, them's, them's the rules. I just wanted to bring to your attention that this demo file that was in fact done a long time ago in 2020, at which point Embergen didn't have a feature to pad these single VDB files here. So you can see here that the first 10 only have a one digit number at the end. The next, I suppose, 100 have two digits at the end and then further down here we have three digits in the number at the end. Now the program that I'm going to use inside Das Studio is called the BAS and that doesn't really understand that. It requires a padded number there. So like in case of the number one or number zero it'll be like zero 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 or zero zero one or something like that. So they have to be the same amount of digits at the end. And the current version of Embergen already supports that. So if you're exporting that from Embergen directly, don't worry about it. If you've downloaded a demo file from their website, you have to tweak that. And I'm using a little tool for that, which is also free. And you get that from bulkrenameutility.co.uk. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. It's a free download and it integrates itself on Windows into your Explorer. So once you install that, I can literally go and rename them in place here. There are, of course, 497 other ways to do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it. You can use the command line, regular expressions, you know the drill on your operating system. So I'm just going to go and select the first 10 files in the sequence here and right click. And then I'll say bulk rename here. And when I do that, the window comes up in which I'm going to go and just this pre-selected them here. I'm going to go and say replace the last things here and just apply a few extra zeros here. So I'm going to replace the last digits here. So underscore A underscore. That's selecting that. And I'm going to leave the number in place. I'm going to replace that with underscore A underscore. And then three leading zero because I want to be generous. And this is 
before and this is after essentially that's what i want i want this padded thing here then at the bottom i'll hit rename and then all my 10 files have been renamed that's excellent i'm going to do that for the next 100 files in the sequence of so starting from 10 to file 99 like so and again i'm going to go and replace the a underscore a not with a underscore a three zeros but a underscore a two zeros now so that the padding is the same thing here once again click on rename that's perfect 90 items have been renamed not 190 sorry <laughs> then the last ones here they have a three digit number so i'm going to go and select all of those and once again i'm going to go the same thing and just add one to the padding there hit rename and now we have renamed everything and as you can see in the finder window the padding is now correct so once again that is not necessary if you export something directly from embergen because that has been fixed now let's go and bring in a convenient helper tool that Abbas has. So Abbas is the tool that I've introduced with the animated surface textures that we can also use to animate VDB files. I've already got it open here. If you want to look for it, then I find it most convenient in the smart content to click on all products and just search for Abbas. And then this comes up. It has one convenience prop that I'd like to use, which is the Abbas Basic Open VDB container. And you can, of course, create your own. All it is is really, if I go and double click that, it brings in a cube here in the center of my scene. And that is just a semi transparent cube with the simple iRay VDB shader applied. So I don't have to do that. If we just check that under surfaces here, it's already called volume. That's exactly what we need. And on the volume channel, I can now go and pick my VDB file. In fact, let's do that and just go and browse to one that is in my downloads folder here under building implosion. I'm not going to select the first one. I just want to check the position of the file. I'm going to select one in the middle so that we see something. And then on the density multiplier, one is probably not enough. So I'm going to crank that up to 200 just so that I know something's going to be there. So now I don't see anything in filament because this is an iRay only feature. VDBs can only render it in iRay at the time of recording this video. So here it is. It's looking as if something's there, but it's also not quite looking like the building implosion that I had in mind. And that's because by default, files from Embergen are being rotated like this. But again, I've shown you how to correct that rotation. It's just that the demo files don't have that rotation applied. So we're going to have to do this manually. I'm going to do this on the VDB container. I'll head over to the parameters tab under rotation and tweak the X rotate by minus 90. And that'll turn it up the correct or turn it down the correct way, but it's also now moved it below the ground. So I'll go and bring the Y translation up by something along the lines of that. Kind of depends if you want it to a little bit of ground shadow underneath it. I might just put that to 200 just for our example here. So we have a little bit of shadow underneath. Then I'll frame my viewport up so that I see what's going down here. I'm thinking, okay, that's, you know, it's looking handsome here. Now let's get to rendering the animation. With this setup, I'm going to go and open a new tab. I've got it open here already called Abbas. If you don't have it, you can just go and right click, add a pane, and then you have Abbas here. And then we need that to create that animated shader so that we can swap out the VDB files on a per frame basis. So on my scene tab, with my VDB container selected, that's kind of important, head over to the Abbas tab and choose create an animated shader. And you can leave the default name or you can rename it to something that is more to your liking. I'm going to leave the defaults, hit accept. And that's us really done with the Abbas tab. So in the scene tab, I can see that I have another node here, which is the animated shader. And just for my own sanity sake, I'm going to left click and drag that underneath my open VDB container. You can also call that something else. It doesn't have to be open VDB container. It could be something like implosion, for example. And now I know that the animated shader for the implosion is underneath it. That's just you know, to keep it a bit tidier in the scene tab. So now with the animated shader selected, with that node selected, I'll head over to my parameters tab. And in here, I have a section called a bass. If I open that, I see all the surface properties 
of my OpenVDB container. So now I can go and animate them. The secret of a BAS is that it hooks into the mechanism that DAS Studio lets you animate things on the parameters tab, but not on the surfaces tab. So it basically mimics that. It creates, I guess, aliases or something like that under the hood or linked proxies or something like that. So with this mechanism, we can now go and animate any of these properties here. So since we don't want to animate a color or an opacity or whatnot, we want to animate swapping out files, I'm going to have to go up to a bass here and first of all enable this shader. So I want to enable the animation on it. Click that. And then underneath it here, I want to also enable the files animation. That is also important. Let's do that. So now I have this completion slider that can tell me when the first frame in the sequence is supposed to be on the timeline and when the last frame in the sequence is supposed to be on the timeline. Speaking of timeline, let's go and set the first VDB in our sequence. So that isn't this one here under volume. I'm going to go and open this up now. This is essentially the surface properties and under volume again, I'm going to go and browse to the first volume file in our sequence. So browse and use this one here, zero, zero, zero. Open that. And this doesn't change in the viewport unless we go and wiggle the timeline slider. And we're going to do that in a moment. I'll go back to a bass here and in fact wiggle the completion slider here. And if I do that, it goes and creates a keyframe under the hood. If you don't do that, this does not create a keyframe under the hood. Remember how long the VDB sequence was? I don't either, but I think it was about 120 frames. So I'm going to tell my timeline to not be 31 frames. I'm going to tell it to be 120 frames in total, just so that we have a longer space to play back our VDB sequence. So with that, I can take my playhead and move it all the way over to the right hand side. That's the end of my animation. And look at that. The VDB has been swapped out for basically nothing. And that's because we're now showing the first one, the number 000, and we have our completion slider still on zero zero at that point. So nothing's been animated. But now with my playhead on the last frame, I'm going to drag the completion slider here up to 100%. And at that point, a bass knows that this is going to be the end of my sequence and everything in between will be interpolated there. Very clever. If I go and grab my playhead and left click and drag that over somewhere to the middle, you can see that the completion slider now moves together with the timeline. And it also now goes and swaps out the VDBs accordingly. It doesn't matter if the frame rate of your timeline or the frames on your timeline don't match up with the amount of items in the VDB sequence. You can just go and let a bass interpolate that. So if I go to the front here, kind of to 20, I see that my cloud is much smaller. And if I go to the middle, it gets a little bit larger. And if I go to the towards the end, you can see that it gets a bit bigger. And sadly, I can't play this back in real time because iRay is kind of struggling to do that. You can see kind of, you know, with, with a lot of grain and a lot of skipped frames that it's trying to do it. But yeah, I guess my computer isn't strong enough to, to play this back as a good preview. But you can see the power of this and now you can go and render this out together with other things or by itself. I'm going to show you how to do this. If you want to see an example of this in a kind of a working project, check out my New Year's Eve stream that I did spontaneously on the 31st of December 2022, in which I'm using something like that as part of an image composition. Let me just quickly show you how to render this out, because if I press Control R now, I get a single frame and that's really not the animation I was looking for. So I do get a transparent background here. That's that's what I want, but I only get a single frame. So the kind of related part of the puzzle is how do we actually get an animation out of Das Studio to you know mess with on our own time. So the way to do that is on the render settings tab and by default, this is under the general section here. This is set up to render type still image, and that means only one image comes out. To render out an animation, you're going to have to set this over to either image series or movie. I strongly recommend not to use movie because that uses a very old compression codec and it's a little bit flaky. I wouldn't want to use it for post-production in any shape or form. It also doesn't export an alpha channel. So I would always recommend to use an image series for that. And this will now change the interface a little bit in that you give it a path down here. So this is where the image sequence is being exported to. And then you can give it a file name, something that will be appended with the padded four digit number of which image that is. And you can also specify the range of what you want to render. So 
by default it's everything zero to frame 119 if you wanted to have something in the middle or something else and you can set that here and when you now click render then you'll render out one image after the other and that'll be stored in that directory of your choice so don't put it on your desktop make another folder and put that in there and then you can go and compile this either with photoshop or with premiere or many of the other video editors and that is how we can render a VDB sequence inside DAS Studio that then looks something like that. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, then do leave them down below in the comments. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.